Hello everybody, it's Sanyar, Engineer, MBA and Investor and in today's video, I want to talk about Invite in their presentation for the JP Morgan Healthcare Virtual Conference that happened just under two weeks ago. I want to talk about all of that presentation today, looking at these PowerPoint slides. Now, before we jump into today's video, you guys know the drill. You know what I'll ask you. Destroy that like button, guys. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. And if you have any comment, input, feedback, especially on Invite, leave me comments below. We try to read and respond to every single comment. So this presentation, like I said, it happened on 12 January of this year. So just under two weeks ago. And Invite from genetics to health, right? Let's take a look at what these PowerPoint slides are all about. I do want to remind you that Invite is a genomics company. It is one of those companies that we believe is here to stay. We've actually coined this company to be the Amazon of genetics, but obviously, obviously it is a lot more than that. So we'll take a look here. So what we can find here. So first of all, the progress of genomics has come, you know, has come just in the recent 80 years, arguably, right? Uh, a lot of things have happened. And since the Unum, Human Genome Project, which basically finalized early 2000s, this was basically what uh, triggered a lot of these companies to come about, right? And since 2003, the Unum, Human Genome Project complete, like I just mentioned, clearly you can see all, all of these companies coming about. And it just sort of, triggered that genomics era that we're currently sort of in. I would argue that a lot of things actually changed in the last eight to five years, especially with technology like genome editing, CRISPR technologies and so on. And obviously the, the, the growth of ARCANVAS and the ability for them to be able to communicate genomics to the average citizen, right? I would argue that this would be the latest era we're in, but obviously this slide is stating that everything changed after human, human genome project. And we sort of been in that current era that we're still in. Clearly you can see Invite was one of the byproducts of that era. So at least one in 12 babies are born with a rare disease, right? And we actually talk a lot about in this channel, right? And, you know, we talk a lot about CRISPR technologies, you know, erratic and rare diseases or just diseases in general, right? But the truth of the matter is that before you even get to editing genes out and making, uh, being pro, uh, being reactive to the de re, uh, to the diseases, you need tools and mechanism to be proactive, right? And I think this is what a company like Invite sort of provides to the public, right? It sort of lets you be proactive about your health. It lets you be proactive about the health of your community members. Obviously here we're talking about diagnostics. We're talking about getting gen gen genome information, genetics uh, information. So six plus million pregnancies in the US each year, you know, obviously there's so many complications and risk with pregnancy. And in 2022, you know, gone are the days where we don't know what's going to happen. Gone are the days where, you know, we don't really have access to the tools. We do have access to the tools. And it's not just about Invite, right? There's so many companies working on improving the health of screening, early screening, early diagnostics. But obviously here, this is what the era of genomic medicine is all about. This is what um, Invite is trying to, you know, communicate with you. It's that it's not just about, you know, it's not just about, you know, getting certain genome information, like for example, your blue eyes, getting more information on that, or maybe your potential uh, future uh, baby if you do end up having babies. Uh, but it's more than that, right? It's about cardiovascular diseases, being proactive about it, oncology, cancers, diseases, rare diseases, all sorts of screening impacts, right? So clearly here you can see this is what they're trying to promote. And obviously they're they're communicating to the public here in this these slides that you know this is a, a this is a serious serious topic that many many will affect many many people including of course all families around us for example or in canada considering we always have at least one person in our distant family at least that would be affected one way or another by any of these rare diseases any of these issues right pregnancy complications uh, it could be all sorts of problems, right? So 
you know, obviously this is the slide they've actually put in their investor relations in the past, right? In their corporate uh, latest quarterly earnings, at least uh, it's their TAM for at least the U.S. markets, right? And 26 billion, 5 billion, 60 billion, and 63 billion, respectively, to all, everything you're seeing here: newborn screening, fertility, disease risk, risk and screening, and neuro the neuros issues, right? And the the thing I want you guys to take away from at least this slide is literally this point here, U.S. markets, right? This is just for U.S. It's not even for Canada. It's not for Europe. It's not for Australia. It's not for APAC. It's not for Africa. It's literally just for U.S. And clearly here you can see these are huge, huge total addressable markets, right? So the future of medicine, right? Single greatest shift in medicine and healthcare, modern medicine, chemotherapy, standard of care, this is, you know, the way it's, it's being done. And I've actually covered that in my live stream yesterday is chemotherapy is probably the worst thing that's ever been invented, in my opinion, when it comes to solving a problem with your health, right? Uh, I understand that's basically the only quote unquote alternative we have, especially when it comes to cancers and diseases, certain diseases. But the point here is that you're basically, you have a car, it has a problem in the sensor. And instead of fixing that sensor, you're basically hammering the car with a jackhammer or whatever tool until it actually fixes the sensor, which is absolutely mind boggling. You're going to cause so many issues on the car. Same happens with your body, right? If you start killing your healthy cells, then you introduce other problems. Obviously, we all know the visual effects of uh, chemotherapy, losing your hair uh, and so on. But, you know, it is what it is. This is where we stand right now. And basically with genome management, right? What you can do is you can get effective prevention. This is what we talk about, proactive early detection, right? This is all about proactive. It's all about getting your information and we do have technology to have that genome management, right? And this is what Envita is sort of positioning themselves to be. This is why we sort of said that this is the Amazon of genomics, right? So the evolution of platform, right? To where the company is today, right? They sort of started as genetic testing, your usual genetic testing, make genetic testing affordable. Even today, genetic testing is not that affordable, to be honest. Um, I took a look at some of the pricing, you know. I mean, obviously, if you're in the middle class in US or Canada, you're going to be able to afford those. But I'm talking about like genetic testing availability to like all, all population around the world, right? Even less developed nation. Make it to the to the extent of what the pandemic vaccines really cost to an individual, right? And that's the, the idea I'm thinking about when I talk about genetic testing being affordable, because ultimately this should be, this should be your right, right? This should be your right to have information on genetics, right? This should not be a luxury. This should not be a product of luxury. Uh, I really don't believe that because if you know what's wrong with the genetics, if you know how to be proactive about certain things, then you can sort of take steps to sort of make sure you don't end up getting a certain disease or you don't end up getting diabetes, for example, or of course, a certain cancer, or at least take steps to sort of reduce the probability of you uh, getting those types of diseases, right? So, and where they are today, you know, it's all about sharing genetics on a global scale, diagnose, to diagnose more patients correctly earlier and bring more therapies to the market faster. So this is all about partnerships, it's all about leveraging that data, and then obviously providing that information to healthcare providers. And the way I think about it, I, I see, you know, there's a reason why they partnered up with uh, Teladoc. Now, I see how they can sort of have those partnerships and leverage those partnerships, right? Right. So, you know, it's it's um, this this slide is actually really cool because it talks about what they can do with their data. Right. And data is the new commodity. Right. Data is the new oil in 2020 in 2020s or 2030s. In my opinion, data is going to drive many of these companies. It's been driving many of these companies in the recent decade. But 2020s, we've been seeing all these companies coming about. We saw what Tesla is doing with AI. We see what Apple is trying to do. We see what. Microsoft is trying to do all these big tech companies, including Teladoc, that uh, obviously not a big tech company, but uh, obviously they're all about that data as well, uh, which we covered over the weekend. So uh, this ecosystem will sort of allow them to, you know, promote security, permission, analytics, trust, and you have this cycle that keeps going and it, it's that network effect that just expands, right, to new consumers and total address more market just increases. 
moving beyond the innovation across the digital health segment. So it's not just about genetic information, guys. It's not just looking good with that data, right? And the, from selling that data to a very, very expensive set of data to maybe, you know, uh, as a luxury product, it's more than that, right? It's about, you know, solving our issues in healthcare, our legacy healthcare, and obviously making these types of partnerships with these, these type of companies, Snowflake, uh, managing that data, right, through AI, through artificial intelligence, obviously through big data, through machine learning and so on. So uh, this is what we talked about, right? AWS, Google, CFZ, uh, Microsoft, all, all of these partnerships here is extremely vital for a company like Envite. You cannot survive as a genomic company trying to promote data without building partnerships, right? The same way CRISPR companies will need big pharma companies partnership in terms of revenues, in terms of deals, in terms of moving forward and change, moving the needle when it comes to changing the legacy healthcare, same thing applies here, right? So growth and uh, revenue growth, clearly you can see here, the revenue growth has been here. 2021, we'll have the full number shortly as revenues are posted, but uh, clearly here you can see growth extending here from year to year, 64% uh, estimated. Clearly, you can see the growth has been there. And the drivers for being an industry leader is a lot more than, again, just genetic testing, right? It has to be more. It has to be leveraging that data platform, right? This is why that data platform becomes the biggest part, right? Oncology, women's health. Uh, we just talked about pregnancies. We just talked about complications and so on. So several segments of the market that they're trying to penetrate and do a lot more. And then, of course, the portfolio growth, they're, they're focusing on their active partners, their active accounts, patient growth, number of patients available for data sharing. Uh, so that's, I love how they put their SaaS, a SaaS keyword here, literally basically positioning themselves to be a software as a service company. And this is what we talked about it, right? Genomics has, has a software as a service, right? Genomics has a service, G-A-A-S. I would love if someone, one of these companies would use that term, but obviously they wouldn't because, you know, SaaS just looks a little bit more familiar to legacy investors. So clearly here, you know, they're trying to operate under uh, a basis where they can grow and sort of limit their costs, right? And of course, with data, that becomes a flywheel effect, right? You reduce your costs over time because things, uh, you can compound on it, right? That's the beauty of software. That's the beauty of the internet, ultimately. And that's where we think genomics will be heading in the upcoming 5, 10, 15 years, right? So this is what the slides are ending with. So obviously the company is currently somewhere in this line. They said they were somewhere here and this is where they want to be. And they basically want to position themselves to be, to provide you information about uh, genetics, information about yourself, about your community members, and then have that shared amongst healthcare providers, uh, specialists, and basically leverage that genome management, right? Becoming a genomics as a service company, right? Basically becoming the Google, of genomics, becoming the Amazon of genomics, which is mind-boggling, right? When you think about it, it's a lot more than just moving information to information like bits to bits, right? This is moving atoms to atoms. That's how you have to think about it, right? So this is a revolutionary shift. Uh, this was, again, their presentation in the uh, JP Morgan uh, virtual conference that just happened two weeks ago. And I do want to just finish up with the stock price right now. And currently it's down almost 10%, 9%, I guess. Uh, it was over 10% earlier, but look at this, guys. If you take a look at the past, uh, when they peaked in 2020, basically, almost over a year ago, just a little bit over a year ago, the company stock has been down almost 83, 85%, which is crazy, right? And this is what I want to end this video with, right? There are opportunities out there in genomics. There are opportunities out there in the genetic testing field and you have to do your own research, right? And I think you as an investor, it's very important for you to understand the landscape and understand the, the forces, the macros, right? And try not to get narrow focus on one particular stock price. Like, look, this company is down 85%. Oh my God, it's gonna go bankrupt. Look. The fun, ask yourself the simple question, have the fundamentals changed of this company? And if you believe they have changed for the worst, then in my opinion, you should be investing in this company because the company is getting worse. 
But if the fundamentals have not changed, if things are getting better, if revenues are growing, and if leadership is intact, and if everything is still intact, but the only thing that's going down is the stock price, then you have to step back and look at the genomics field as a whole, the industry, and try to understand what is going on, right? How how can you explain these stock prices? Whether those CRISPR companies, genetics com testing companies, uh, sequencing companies, uh, diagnostic companies, you know, this is what you have to do. This is what your role is, I think, as an investor. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. You guys, thank you so much for watching. Again, like this video, smash the like button, subscribe if you're not, and we'll see where NVT goes. Thank you very much.